Hi folks, we're going to give you a quick look at a valve adjustment on a motorcycle engine. This is out of a 2005 Hayabusa. Just a basic look at what you're going to run into if you decide to do this yourself. This is a motor that my friend bought to put in a bike that uh, currently has a blown engine, which is that one. It was basically bought in five boxes and I've assembled it to this point and it turns out now that it's going to need a valve adjustment I've only measured probably three or four valves but one of them one of the exhaust valves right here is very very tight so basically this is what you're going to see when you pull the cover off your cam, ho cam holders cam chain guide cam chain sprockets and your timing marks are going to be down in here through this window on the Hayabusa it might be different on whatever bike you're doing but it's all basically the same idea so you're going to turn it over to specified timing marks and make sure this is the most important thing you need manual either in paper form or online download it get it you definitely need it it's good to have so you turn it over to a specified spot with the, the Suzuki here. It uses the uh, marks in the cam too to give you an idea that you're in the right spot too. And then it's going to tell you to check certain valves at certain positions. These are the bo both of the positions here. This is the second position, this is the first. Now the usual way it's going to work is you're going to turn the motor over to one position and you're going to check half of the valves and then you move it over to the next position and you'll check the rest of the valves how you're going to do that is with thickness gauges or feeler gauges you're basically going to fit them in between the cam and the tappet like that it's pretty hard to see it's pretty hard to show you like this but once you're in there you'll see pretty easily how it works this valve is not in the right position to be checked right now, but just for an example, you'd be coming in like this in between the cam and the tap to feel the thickness. And when you're doing it, you want to be able to slide the gauge in easily. Not too tight that you really got to force it, and not so it just kind of flops around in there. You just want to have it nice and smooth in and out. And that's how you know you get the right reading for it. What I usually do... I make a little crappy drawing like this, uh, draw out each cylinder, each valve, then you can just write out each clearance that you have for each one. It's the easiest way to keep track of everything. Now if you're lucky, you won't even have to adjust anything. You just take it apart, measure it, everything's in spec, you're good. Put the cover back on top, and you're good to go. But if you have to make an adjustment, that's when it gets a little trickier. Um, first of all, You'll have to remove your cam chain tensioner, loosen off the cam chain, then remove your cam holders. And on this one here, it's two pieces, one single one for exhaust and one for intake. A lot of them have just one complete holder for all of them. Anyway, they have to come off, the cams have to come out, and then you get at the tappets themselves, often called uh, buckets, shim under bucket valves. So again, if you were to measure all these and they were in spec, then all this is all you do. You just basically put it back together and you go for a ride. But uh, since we've got some very tight valves, we've got to flip the page here and go on to adjusting them. That means this stuff has to come back apart. Alright, I've just started taking some of it apart. I've got the cam chain tensioner out. The cam chain is loosened off. Uh, the guide is out, the oil tube is out. I just wanted to point out that uh, you notice these numbers that are cast into these cam holders. They're there for a reason. You're going to want to follow those numbers when you're tightening and loosening this off because if you, let's say, loosen all of these bolts here and then these and then these and work your way down, it can put a lot of strain on this piece and it can actually crack it. It'll, it'll damage it. It's, it's very strong, but it's very brittle if there's force put on it the wrong way. 
All right, here it is with the uh, cams removed. Got your cam chain here. I just got a pair of vice grips and a zip tie holding it so it doesn't fall down inside the engine. Uh, there's the cams and holders over there. So these are your buckets, the tappets. All right, there we go. I did not want to let go. All right, inside you got your valve, valve spring. And then whenever you pull these out, that is the shim right inside of there. It's uh, usually going to get stuck inside, but if you tap it at all, it's going to fall out of there. So just be careful you don't lose it. I'm just going to set this back in place, loose for now. Now when you're working with this, you're going to want to keep everything organized. All of the tappets, you want them to go back right where they came from. When you take it apart, you want it to go back together in the same place. The shims, if they're in spec, obviously, they're going to stay put. But anything that was out of spec, you're going to swap out for a different size shim. I'm not even going to bother trying to explain how to do that, how to choose which shim goes where. It's very simple, but I'm just poor at explaining something like that. The easiest way is with these charts that are in the manual, where you just look up your shim that's currently in place and your clearance that you measured earlier and then you just follow it out on the chart and it's going to tell you which shim to replace it with. That's probably the foolproof way to do it. If you're lucky to, you can uh, sometimes get away with just trading shims from one valve to another. For example, if let's say these two valves were both out of adjustment, then you would measure your valve clearance, measure the shims in each one, and possibly be able to just swap them. Move this one here, move this one here, and it would bring both of them in spec. Or, you know, this one and this one, or whatever. But you're not always that lucky. Sometimes you will have to buy new ones, or sometimes I've heard of uh, some bike dealers trading shims. You can bring in your old shims that you don't need anymore. They'll swap them out for the proper size ones that'll work for you. So to finish it up, Basically, you measure all the shims that you have uh, need to change or switch out. You do your calculations to figure out which shims you need to replace them with. Then you drop them in place under the buckets and put everything back together. Cams back in, torque them all down, time the, uh, time the engine. And then measure them all again. Double check. Make sure that everything is right where you expected it to be after you're done. You don't want to just assume it's right and then fire it up and have one tight or held open and, you know, big damage. It's not a really hard job. It's just something you really have to pay attention to what you're doing and uh, make sure you uh, follow the manual.